Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In a recent video, I covered the new features in Isotope Ozone 9, including its new match EQ. It's actually not a new EQ, but they uh, converted it to a standalone match EQ. And I showed that you could use this to match the EQ profile of one track to another, or better match the two. One thing that a lot of people don't know about is that Logic actually has a very capable match EQ plugin that's a stock plugin, and you can use it for this same thing. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take two mixed but unmastered tracks and match their EQ curve a bit better. So this is perfect when you've uh, mixed an entire album or an EP, and you want each of the mixes to sort of better fit each other's uh, EQ curves or profile. Okay, so matching the EQ profiles of all of the songs in my project is typically the f one of the first things I'll typically do when mastering. So I might make some volume adjustments and things like that before this, but this is pretty much the first step when mastering. Because if I have all of my tracks on the project, all the songs in the project, if they have a similar EQ profile, they don't need to be exactly the same, but they have, if they have a similar profile, then most of the other mastering plugins and hardware can be the same. Um, so I don't have to have a whole bunch of individual settings for each channel. And I may still go back and tweak some things with some custom EQ curves for certain songs, but this is a really great starting point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to these two songs here. Let's just listen to the first one here. And then I have my second one here. Now, overall, with both songs, uh, because these are completely unmastered, there's some clarity issues that I'd probably take care of, uh, maybe using some mid-side processing, using some imaging to give the, the mix a bit more width. But overall, the tone of the first one is really good. I like the way that the overall uh, balance sounds. In the second example, it's a bit, the high range is a bit too fizzly for me, but then it doesn't have the pop and the, the crispness of the first one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the first track, my first song, as a reference for the EQ for the second song. If you're working with more than two songs, you're gonna have multiple match EQs out. Typically what I'll do is I'll pick the best song, the best mixed song on the project, and that will become my, my reference for my match EQ, and I'll apply that same reference to all of the other songs on the project. So the first thing you need to do is pull up the match EQ and you're gonna to wanna to put it on the actual channel that you want it to affect. So in my case, it's uh, this channel, the bottom channel here, the one that has the, the frequency problems. And what you're gonna do is click on this current tab and then click learn and then play back a good chunk of the song. So I'll try to get, you know, pretty much a whole verse and a good chunk of the chorus in there, a good, pretty long portion of the song so you can get a good uh, frequency analysis here. I'll uncheck the learn button here. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to input audio from the reference track, the first track. Uh, this is the track that I want this current track to sound more like. So you click on the reference tab, and there's a couple different ways you can do this. The first way you can do this is you can sidechain in the audio from that uh, track just by clicking here. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually mute the region of uh, my current track. So I'll just press Control M. And then I should be able to unmute this. And this will actually import the audio. It'll input the audio rather into the plugin from another track. So I'll just click Learn and I'll play a good portion of that first, uh, of that first song. So 
And then after you're all done, just uncheck the learn button. And I have my two EQ curves here, one for my reference and one for the current track that I'm on. Now, if you don't want to use the side chain option here, by the way, once you're done, make sure you turn this off, set the side chain to none. And then I'll go ahead and mute the original reference track and then unmute uh, the region that I'm on, the region that I'm currently on. Uh, you can just drag and drop the match EQ back and forth between the channels uh, if you find that easier. Um, it doesn't lose any information when you drag it from one channel to another. So, okay, so I've got my current um, channel's EQ curve and I have the reference curve. Then all you have to do is go over here to EQ curve and click match. And what this does is it creates a match curve that's applied to my current track based on the information that it grabbed from the reference track. So there's a few things you can do here to customize this. One, you can adjust the smoothing of it. Um, so if you want to really pinpoint some of these resonances that were in the reference uh, track, we can do that. I actually, for mastering, I do like to use a bit of a less smooth setting. Uh, another thing you can do is you can fully 100% link the left and right channels. Or what you can do is you can pull back the channel linking and you can make the channels a bit more independent. Um, I actually do like to do this, I like to pull this back a little bit uh, because there may be some information in one channel that's different than another. And then you can also choose what type of EQ on, you want to use. You can use a linear phase EQ or a minimal or minimum phase EQ. With minimal or minimum phase EQs, you're going to end up with uh, some phasing issues. Um, so with linear, you get like basically no... It's like a time corrected or a phase corrected EQ, so you don't get any phase uh, coloration or anything like that from the uh, from the EQ. So typically, I use linear phase EQs for mastering, and then you can choose how much of that uh, curve, that matched EQ curve, you want to apply to the signal, or you can apply this inversely as well. Um, this is going to be more if you use this inversely. It's going to be more for like cutting the signal of one channel from another channel to sort of carve out a space for it. Um, that you'd use more in mixing, not for mastering. So I'm gonna pull this up a bit and let's uh, give this a listen. Yeah, it's very subtle, but it's got a bit more of a pop to it. It's got a bit more crispiness to it. And some of these mid-range resonances that have been cut out are really helping it to sound less boxy uh, than it was before. Before it had sort of this mid-range low-end buildup in it. There's just these sort of mid-low mid, mid -low range resonances that were causing it to sound kind of cluttered. And this is uncluttering it a bit. Another thing you can do is you can fade the extremes here. So sometimes if you use a higher setting, you'll find that the upper range and lower range can get really affected in a more extreme range. So what you can do is you can fade those out and you can focus the match EQ more on the middle frequencies. Um, for this, I am gonna pull out a bit of the highs and a bit of the lows, or fade them rather. But another thing you can actually do here you can click on the EQ curve and click and drag up, and you can actually make an, a manual adjustment. And it doesn't just add a band, and you'll see it actually affects the bands around it. So if I wanted more of this area or less of this area, you could pull it in or pull it out. Um, I want even a bit more crispiness in the high range, around 10K or so. So when you add in these bands here, if you want to start over, what you can do is you can uh, option click. It'll set them back to the default setting. But one really important uh, key command to remember is if you click and drag up or down and uh, press shift, what this will do is it will fix the gain. And if you hold control and shift, what this will do is it'll allow you to adjust the bandwidth. The thing that's tricky about this is once you add in a boost or a cut, you can't go back in and readjust it. Um, so you kind of just have to option click and start over. But I want to give this a bit more of a little bit of a more bite in the upper range here. So I'm going to click and drag up a bit and then I'll hold shift and control, make this more of like a wide band thing. And then I'll pull it back just a touch. So again, with mastering, small EQ changes are fine. You know, you don't need to go crazy adding, you know, these big wide band boosts and cuts um, with mastering, it's it's about 
one and two and three percent differences in you know in changing the tone, not about completely you know completely contorting the tone into something different. I just want these two songs to sound a, a, a bit closer to each other, but still maintain their own individual character. So let's give this a listen. And then let me listen to these back to back. So here's the original. And then the current track. Yeah, so it's a bit snappier. It sounds more like uh, the original track, but more like the reference track. Now, another thing you can do with this if you really want to go nuts and you want to have even more control is you can actually load the Match EQ in dual mono mode. Now, in dual mono mode, you can have individual control over the left and right channel, but if you click here, you can actually switch this over to mid-side control. So now I could actually learn the EQ curve of just the mid-channel of my current track and then just the side channels of my current track, and then do the same for the reference track. So the process is the same. I'll click mid, I'll analyze the uh, mid channel of the current track. And then once I've learned the mid channel, I can learn the side channel as well. So now I have an EQ curve analysis for both the mid and side channels of my current track. So all I need to do now, instead of using the side chain, I'm just gonna drag it over to the reference track. I'll just solo out the reference track. And one thing I failed to mention before is that you can actually uh, learn the analysis of both the mid and side channels at the same time. All you have to do is click on mid, go to reference, click learn, then go to side, click on reference, and click learn. You can do this with the current uh, channel as well, and it'll learn both of these uh, channels when I play back the audio. Okay, so now that I've learned a reference uh, EQ curve for both my mid and side channels, I can just drag the match EQ back onto the original track, click mid, EQ curve match, and then side EQ curve match. So now I have two individual match EQ curves, one for the mid channel and one for the side channel, and I can adjust these independently. So maybe in one channel I want a bit more, and then in the other channel I want a bit less. Maybe in one channel I want the smoothing to be a bit less, and maybe in the other I want the smoothing to be a bit more. Or maybe you want to add in uh, some additional bands, some additional adjustments just in the side channels that aren't in the mid channel, or vice versa. In this particular case, I actually liked uh, the result I got before when I was working in stereo, but I just wanted to show you that this is compatible with mid-side processing as well, if you need even more control. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. I'm getting really close to 200,000 subscribers, and I'll be doing an update video on that and what's happening in the new year. I've got a lot of new plans um, and uh, some new content uh, that I'm gonna be releasing uh, in 2020, and I'm really excited about it. So I'll do a uh, update video soon. You can check me out on social media and Patreon if you wanna support me, but another way to support the channel is I'm now an affiliate for Sweetwater, Splice.com, and Accusonus. So if you're gonna buy any plugins from them or any hardware or any musical instruments, anything like that from any of those companies, an easy way to support the channel is to make your purchase, but use my affiliate link below when you make the purchase and my channel will actually get a commission, a little kickback from uh, the sale. 
So that's a really easy way to uh, help support the channel. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for the continued support and thanks for watching.